Bruce, should we get started? Yeah? Okay. Well, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us. I am, I am Joanna Besky, and I'm the pastor here at Deerfield United Methodist Church. And from all the stories I've heard, I'm sorry that we're not having our soup meal. I've heard that uh, that was quite the event, but I'm glad that at least we can get together these next uh, five or six Wednesdays and share in God's word and encourage one another. I wanted to uh, also thank you in advance for your patience with any technical difficulties. We've been trying all sorts of different things out and this service is also being simulcast on YouTube. And if someone asks you about it, you can always go to the Deerfield UMC YouTube channel after tonight as well and watch it. And I think that's it for the announcements. Everyone is muted and I should be in the speaker um, spot. So let's begin with our call to worship and join with me, won't you? Rend your hearts and not your garments, says the Lord. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? He has shown you, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, that you do justice, you love mercy, and you walk humbly with your God. Let's pray. O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made. From the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death, you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let us join together with the singing of Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Why is it stopping it? Because you're not screen sharing with the unmuted button. <laughs> we can hear you guys now. <laughs> Shall we go back and start the song over? Yeah, hold, hold on one second. Thank you.
tonight. The Old Testament lesson comes from Psalm 51, 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my inequity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my inequity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. The New Testament lesson comes from Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So I have a confession tonight. I only started taking down Christmas on Monday. It's been that kind of a year, right? Plus, I love seeing all the beautiful lights around me and all the, the things that spark joy for me. But it was time. Valentine's Day was past. Christmas had to go away. So I got out the red and, and green plastic storage bins and the tissue paper, and I thought, this is easy. I'll have this done in no time. I'll just wrap everything up, fill the boxes, and put them away. But there was a problem. I opened the boxes and they were already full. What is all this stuff? I thought to myself, you wouldn't believe the things that I found in those boxes. Broken ornaments, old, old, old shredded pieces of tissue paper, decorations that I have never seen before and items, boxes for items that I don't even own anymore and just so much junk. And so before I could move on, before I could move forward, the decluttering had to happen out with the old. And even while I was packing up, I found items that I had displayed, but just they were just no longer serving their purpose or were part of traditions that I no longer celebrated. And so those items went into a giveaway box. And then I made a list of new items that I wanted to incorporate into my Christmas in the next year. As I continued to put things away that I was keeping, I, I found myself being just overwhelmed with memories, the family trip to Maine that was represented by one of the ornaments and just various globes and unique souvenirs from my trips around the world, items that were passed down from generations or new things that I made to put on the tree or to decorate or things that my nieces and nephew made for me. And I found this joy kind of rising up within me. Finally, as the boxes were packed and put away, I looked at the space that they had once occupied and I noticed two things. I noticed an abundance and a lack. First off, there was an abundance of dust hidden under those items that had sat there for a couple months. And then there was a lack in terms of the spaces that were once filled now being empty. 
it was time for some deep cleaning of all those nooks and crannies and then a rearranging of the decorations and the furniture. I still don't know what piece of furniture used to be where the tree once was. Well, why am I sharing all this with you tonight? As I was doing this mundane annual job of taking down Christmas, the Lord was speaking to me through it about this season of Lent that we are beginning today. The word Lent, I didn't know this until this year, actually means, literally means spring. And throughout history, as early as 300 AD, a period of time prior to Easter was set aside for a spiritual spring cleaning, a time to remove the old and broken, celebrate that which is good and God honoring, sweep out the cobwebs, rearrange the furniture of one's life to align with the will and purposes of God. It's been a time for voids and abundance, a time to reflect on our faith journey and renew our walk with God with a recommitment to him and the spiritual disciplines that keep us connected and growing in our faith. There is much to be learned from David's psalm of repentance after he sinned with Bathsheba and then had his her husband murdered. David was in desperate need of a soul cleansing when I read his prayer sometimes, I can almost hear the crack in his voice and perhaps the quiver of his lip as he, perhaps on the verge of tears even, cries out to God for mercy and for forgiveness. He begins asking for forgiveness in the context of God's attributes. He leans into God, what he knows about who God is his unfailing love and his great compassion. And based on that, not on his ability or the level of his contriteness, he asks for mercy and for a deep soul cleansing from his sin. As we begin this Lent season, what attributes of God do you wanna press into? What aspect of the nature of God do you desire to live in and to grow from. Perhaps it's one of the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, or self-control. Let's take some time over these next 40 days to dig deeper into God's word, to learn from him and to ask him to help us grow. This was part of David's prayer as he declares who God is, saying he is the one who gives wisdom in the secret place. David invites God to search him and to remove everything that doesn't belong. The old tattered and broken pieces that no longer were serving him. And then to come in, inviting God to come in and clean house. Cleanse me and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Or as we would say in West Africa, whiter than milk. Are you willing to give God access to all the nooks and crannies of your life, the places where dust has accumulated, to shine his light, to remove what doesn't belong, what is broken and is no longer serving you, and then allow him Allow that cleansing that comes from exchanging those things for his forgiveness and receiving his unfailing love. There's a story that's told often in sermons and um, it's about a little girl. And I actually think it's more of a, a picture, almost like a cartoon. And it shows a little girl holding an old tattered, dirty, ripped up kind of teddy bear. And Jesus is bending down in front of her, asking her to give it to him. And she's just holding it tight. And she's like, but I just love it. And what she can't see that behind, is behind Jesus's back is something, is a toy, a stuffed animal that is so much better. If he would only, if she would only give the old to him. It reminds me of the scripture in Jeremiah 29, 11 that says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, 
plans to prosper you and not harm you, to give you a future and a hope. We hold on to things like that old teddy bear, thinking that we need them, thinking that we love them. And yet as we open up our hands and offer them to the Lord, he exchanges it for something so much better, himself. Now Lent is often associated with giving things up. I wonder, let's ask the Lord, is there anything he wants us to release and await with expectancy his cleansing and filling in the void with his abundance? One of the results of this process of seeking and receiving forgiveness of allowing God access, open access to all we are for his transfer, transformative work is renewed hope and joy. Joy that comes from a deep and intimate relationship with our father. It's been a hard year for so many of us, a year that perhaps didn't have much joy. We've experienced loss on so many levels health and financial challenges and more. Let us seek the joy that comes not from these temporary fixes or things that satisfy for a moment, but that comes from living in the presence of God. Will you join me this, this season to regularly, maybe even daily, pray these words of David from verses 10 to 12. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. In this moment on Ash Wednesday, I'd like us to take a moment now to affirm our faith in Jesus Christ through a symbolic act, a symbolic imposition of ashes. In doing so, we declare ourselves to God and to God that we are his. If you have something, some dirt or oil available, feel free to use that but it's not about something physically being put on us. It's not some magic. It's about us being marked with the sign of the cross and you can just use your finger. I'm going to pray another prayer and at the end of the time, let us symbolically mark ourselves as Christ with the sign of the cross. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that this mark may be to us a sign of our mortality and repentance, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As has been the uh, practice of this group for years past. Any donations that are given during these Wednesday services will be donated to the Salvation Army. I know their giving has been down this year and we just want to bless this local ministry. Um, you can contact your local pastor. Uh, checks are being made out to Friendship Finley Church with a memo to Salvation Army uh, in the memo line, and we can give you that address to mail those checks. Um, yes. So we want to thank you again for joining us this evening. And as I said at the beginning, if you know someone who wanted to be on this call and couldn't connect or whatever, all of these uh, services, including the ones to come, will be, there we go, the address is on your screen now, and you can copy that down. Um, these services are will be on the Deerfield UMC uh, YouTube page, and people can go there and watch as well. Let's close with these words of benediction.
The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Bless the Lord, he who forgives all of our sins, for his mercy endures forever. Go in peace and serve the Lord. God bless, and we look forward to seeing you next week when Pastor Kelly Vasquez from Rosenhan UMC will be hosting the service. God bless and good evening.